A troubled pop star recovering from the loss of her mother develops a complex relationship with a shady nightclub owner as she prepares for her comeback track. One year after her mother's passing, pop idol Jocelyn attempts to revive her career in the music industry. For her upcoming album's photo shoot, she poses on a coffee table inside her lavish home, donning a red robe and a hospital wristband. Following the photographer's instructions, she displays various emotions, ranging from deep sorrow to sensual gratification. Outside, creative director Xander questions the photoshoot concept, expressing concern that the outfit and hospital band might romanticize mental illness. Record label executive Nikki argues that mental illness can be sensually appealing, a sentiment shared by manager Haim. As the singer poses in a nearly unclothed state, the intimacy coordinator informs the creative director that the artist's writer stipulates that she cannot fully expose her body, as specified in the contract. When Jocelyn joins the conversation, the coordinator proposes amending the writer to grant the pop star greater artistic freedom. However, the condition is that they would need to postpone the shoot and wait 48 hours to redo it. In the pool area, Haim is informed by Leia, the idol's assistant and friend, along with Destiny, another manager, about the viral selfie that has captured the idol with bodily fluid on her face. Filled with panic, the assistant promises the male manager that she will identify the individual responsible for the incident. As a suspicious Jocelyn joins them to inform the manager about the restrictive intimacy coordinator, she inquires about what is happening. However, the trio chooses not to disclose any information. Instead, they continue to act normally to prevent the star from having a breakdown. After after the icon leaves, the trio agrees that Haim should hide the singer's phone so she won't see her controversial photo. To resolve the photo shoot issue, Haim rejects the coordinator's plan to change the writer, pointing out that he has already invested money in the shoot. When the coordinator tries to convince him to prioritize the idol's safety, the manager locks him in the bathroom, paying a crew to ensure he doesn't get out. After Nikki learns about Jocelyn's scandalous image, the team discusses the matter with a pop star's publicist, Benjamin, who reports that the pop star is already a trending topic on social media. As they huddle, pop culture writer Talia arrives and is tasked to complete a profile on the pop star. When Jocelyn looks for her phone around the house, Leia interrupts her, reminding her to join the dancers outside for their rehearsal. As the artist approaches her backup dancers, she greets her friend Diane, who reminds her about their plans for a night out at a club later. As the idol practices her comeback track, World Class Center with the dancers, Talia and Benjamin spectate from above, discussing how the choreography is a homage to Britney Spears, recognizing that the two pop stars had similar publicity struggles. Suddenly, events manager Andrew, who is aware of the viral image, arrives. He then discusses with Haim his dream for the pop star to have a sold-out concert, but is concerned that her controversy is going to affect ticket sales, prompting the manager to reassure him. After the rehearsal, the choreographer gives Jocelyn feedback about her performance, noting that she seems tired. She then gives gives her a break and instructs her to observe Diane's detailed dance moves. As the executives discuss the pop icon's explicit photo, Nikki suspects that it may be due to the idol's psychotic break. As Jocelyn returns to the dance floor, she praises Diane, wishing she could dance like her. Her friend then encourages her to do her best, pointing out they're there because of her. Before she begins, the idol looks at the executives and Talia who are watching her. After mentally preparing herself, she finally perfects the choreography, garnering praise from her spectators. Post-rehearsal, Leia takes Jocelyn inside the house, where the gathered team finally informs her about her explicit viral photo. As Jocelyn worries, Benjamin assures her that they've done actions to track the IP address of the person who posted it. Meanwhile, Nikki expects to wake up the next morning to articles painting the viral idol as a feminist hero and victim. Afterward, the pop star leaves and heads to the sauna to meet Diane, who takes them to the nightclub along with Xander and Leia. Before entering the bar, journalists swarm all over them, taking photos of the pop star. As Jocelyn takes the dance floor, the rat-tailed owner Tedros recognizes her and announces it to everyone. He then invites her to dance with him, which he gladly accepts. As they dance closer, he flirts with her with a pickup line, prompting Jocelyn to respond that she doesn't know him. Nearby, a sober Leia observes the pop star, worried about her actions. Later, Jocelyn and Tedros make out in the back of the club, but they are momentarily interrupted when they hear Leia looking for her. With no trace of the idol, the 
the personal assistant returns to the nightclub, where she dances with Isaac unaware that he's the owner's assistant. When Ted Ross inquires about Jocelyn's new album, the icon argues that he won't enjoy it because she doesn't, emphasizing that the pop genre is superficial. However, the club owner counters her argument by stating that the renowned artist Prince, who is in the same genre, had great music. After expressing their mutual admiration, the rat-tailed guy highlights that the pop star has the best job in the world and encourages her to have more fun. The following day, Leia awakens Jocelyn for her interview with Talia, who questions her about her mom. Suddenly, she pauses her recording, acknowledging her mental toughness despite her scandalous photo issue. Noticing this, the pop star unpauses the recording to continue the interview, prompting the writer to ask about her thoughts on her viral image. When she honestly responds that she felt hurt, the writer points out that her experience can be helpful to women who have also been shamed and humiliated. Deep down, the pop icon acknowledges that people are capitalizing on her situation for their own gain. Talia, in response, pauses the recording once again, confessing that her editor is pressuring her to get the pop star to discuss the viral photo. After grasping the writer's perspective, Jocelyn resumes the recording, sharing that everyone has someone they answer to. When asked by the writer who she responds to, the pop icon reveals that she answers to God. That night while watching television, the pop star asks Leia about her thoughts on her new single. After her assistant shares that the song is impressive, the doubtful icon admits that she feels embarrassed whenever she listens to her music because of its pointless lyrics. Her friend then points out that she feels that way because it's different from the song she did before, asserting that the track is fun and people can dance to it. However, Jocelyn dismisses this, thinking that people are waiting for her to fail since she hasn't released anything in the past year. To ease her friend's worries, the assistant reassures her that it's common for her to doubt herself before releasing a new song, but she emphasizes that her piece is exceptional. When the icon suddenly expresses that she wants to invite Ted Ross over, her friend confesses that she doesn't like the guy's vibe, remarking that he seems exploitative. The pop icon then laughs, saying that she likes it about him, which the assistant finds disturbing. That night, while putting on some minimal clothes, Jocelyn tasks Leia with picking up Tedros at the entrance, who casually kisses her after she opens the door for him. After the assistant tells him to make himself at home, the nightclub owner heads to the piano and plays some keys, disturbing the pop star's friend nearby. As Tedros waits for Jocelyn, he indulges in some liquor, takes a moment to smell the couch pillows, and then practices how he will greet the pop star in front of the mirror. When the singer descends the stairs, the sketchy guy greets her, referring to her as an angel. She asks him if he calls all girls that way, but he denies it, asserting that she's the only one he calls like that. As they enjoy drinking, Leia interrupts them, reminding the singer of her early commitment the following day. Once her assistant leaves, the pop star takes Ted Ross to her workstation, where she plays her new song, World Class Sinner, believing that he will give an honest opinion about it unlike everyone else. As the music plays, they hear the chorus's lyric, I'm just a freak, yeah. Amid the song's second verse, the embarrassed pop star suddenly pauses it, expressing how dishonest the track is because she's not a freak. But Ted Ross explains that he likes the record and understands why the label wants to put it out. However, the rat-tailed guy makes one minor remark about her vocals. If she's going to sing a song about being a freak, she should at least sing it sensually. To solve her vocal problem, Ted Ross covers the singer's face with her robe and wraps the belt around her neck, choking her. As the pop star struggles to breathe under the fabric, the club owner uses a sharp tool to cut a hole over her mouth, allowing her to gasp for air. Afterward, he informs her that she can now sing, leading them to record another version of World Class Sinner. The following day, an upbeat Jocelyn gathers her team, eagerly telling them that she modified her single. As she plays the preview of the new version, it sounds more sensual than the first, prompting Nikki to immediately disapprove of it. After the manager points out that the new version is not commercial enough, she asserts that they've already spent money on streaming services and music video production of the original song. When Jocelyn informs them that she'll just release the new version independently, the disappointed label executive recounts what happened when the pop star's mother got sick. Back then, Nikki and Andrew suggested postponing the artist's upcoming concert so that the pop star could attend to her ill mom. However, the persistent idol tried to be professional and requested not to cancel her tour. Unfortunately, one week prior to Jocelyn's scheduled performance, Nikki received a distressing call informing her that the pop star had experienced a severe mental breakdown. As a result, the team made the difficult decision to cut their losses and refund
on the tickets. Additionally, the team dedicated eight months to helping the pop star regain her mental well-being, before investing millions of dollars to connect her with renowned global producers who could revive her music career. Upon reflecting on past events, the fuming Nikki points out that whether Jocelyn likes it or not, they will pursue with the original version because it's already a big hit. Hearing the decision, Jocelyn calls out her team for being cowards and then storms off. As she gets upstairs, she tries to call Ted Ross who doesn't respond to her. To comfort the despondent artist, Haim joins the pop star in her bedroom, sharing that he has been a wreck for a year after his mother's demise. When the artist asks if he liked the remix, he doesn't answer directly. Instead, he just says that he believes in her. Later that night, Jocelyn works on her music while pleasuring herself in the process. Suddenly, Ted Ross calls and inquires why she shared the unfinished song with her team. The pop star then explains that she couldn't contain herself. Hearing this, the club owner validates her excitement, expressing that he is dedicated to helping her find her real voice. When the pop star asks if he's with people, the rat-tailed guy lies, informing her that he's about to sleep and that his assistant had his phone all day. That's why he wasn't responding. Unbeknownst to the pop icon, Isaac is speaking flirtatiously with her assistant Leia on the phone. Then, Jocelyn invites Ted Ross over after her music video shoot so they can continue working on the music. The next morning, while talking to the nightclub owner, the pop star reveals that her team intends to release the original version of the song. As a result, Ted Ross suggests that Jocelyn should consider assembling a new team consisting of individuals who truly believe in her artistic vision. When the singer argues that she doesn't really have a vision, the club owner counters, asserting that she knows what she wants. On the day of her music video shoot for World Class Sinner, the glammed up Jocelyn is surprised upon seeing the set design, pointing out that it's not what she imagined and fans might not understand. But Sander asserts that she approved of it when he showed it to her during the meeting, leaving her with no choice but to stick with it. After the pop star and crew dance on stage, the director, Kim, cuts the scene, prompting the artist to watch the playback and observe what she needs to improve. Feeling unsatisfied, the performer insists on repeating the dance scene, despite the director's belief that she has already delivered an excellent performance. After more attempts, Kim interrupts, ordering the whole crew to take a break. Shortly after, Diane approaches an exhausted Jocelyn to check up on her. Witnessing the two girls' interaction, Nikki becomes interested in the backup, whom she thinks has potential idol qualities. Feeling frustrated, Jocelyn turns to Haim, asking if it would be feasible to make changes to the set design and reshoot the video the next day. She goes as far as insisting on writing a check to withdraw and start everything anew. However, her manager explains the potential consequences, highlighting that her withdrawal might lead others to believe that she could also cancel her concert. He then advises her to tweak what she desires but still show her full commitment to the shoot. Unbeknownst to Jocelyn, Destiny undertakes a private investigation into Ted Ross. Upon gathering information, the manager promptly informs Haim that the enigmatic individual is a nightclub owner from Hawaii who is heavily indebted to others. Learning this, the male manager shares that the pop star has cuts on her thighs, curious about where they came from. To know more about the sketchy guy, Haim inquires Leia about his appearance, prompting the assistant to reveal that the guy doesn't look much like a Hawaiian because he's a person of color. When inquired about the pop star's thigh cuts, Leia reveals that glass broke on the pop icon's thighs. Meanwhile, a frustrated Kim, who is already fed up with Jocelyn's performance, calls Nikki to intervene and then walks out. As a result, the pop star breaks down and tells her crew to take a break before they record the scene again. Outside the set, Destiny Destiny offers words of encouragement to Jocelyn, urging her to give her utmost effort to her dedicated fans. Recognizing the importance of this, the rejuvenated pop star is set to do her best again on stage. Meanwhile, to assess Diane's vocals, Nikki asks her to sing Jocelyn's single. Impressed with her voice, the manager asks her assistant, Obin, to take the backup dancer to another stage for a track recording. On her way back to the set, the pop star encounters Talia, who she requests to take into consideration her grieving state when writing an article about her. Her. The empathetic writer then pats her shoulder, recognizing that she's just being human. Back on stage, Jocelyn finally gives her best performance, garnering praise from her team. However, when she is about to see the playback, Kim informs her that the whole take is out of focus, urging her to repeat everything. Frustrated, the pop star sits on stage and then takes off her heels, revealing her injured feet. As she opens her thighs, her cuts are visible to everyone, prompting the makeup
makeup artists to conceal them again. Meanwhile, in the nightclub, Ted Ross relaxingly sits on the couch, electrocuting Isaac with a shock device as he directs him to dance sensually. Before another take, Jocelyn breaks down and starts calling for her mom, which the managers hear. However, when Haim confronts her about it, the pop star denies it, reasoning that her mom passed away last year. Following her fellow manager's instruction, Destiny comforts the crying artist, validating her emotions. When she suggests announcing another break time, the pop star asserts that she wants to continue. However, Nikki steps in and recommends that Jocelyn simply go home and take some rest. Tearfully agreeing with her manager's suggestion, the pop star apologizes and requests to reschedule the shoot for the following day, offering to cover all expenses. After the unstable icon departs, the manager calls upon Diane to take over. Later, Haim informs Jocelyn that Nikki is scrapping the music video, prompting the artist to ask him if she will lose everything. Frankly, the manager reveals that he just can't keep covering half the mortgage unless she releases commercial music. When the pop star argues that she wants to be a timeless artist, the manager asserts that she's not putting out any new music nor suggesting alternatives, emphasizing that she doesn't back up her words with action. In that moment, the manager reminisces about the first time he saw Jocelyn perform in a mall. She captivated the audience with her rendition of Fever, and the amazed crowd requested an encore. He deeply desires for her to tap into her God-given talent once again and utilize it. In response, the icon urges her manager not to give up on her, displaying her determination and resilience. That evening, the pop star gives Ted Ross a call, inviting him to her house. Without her knowledge, the rat-tailed manager is with Diane in his nightclub, who turns out to be one of his talents. This reveals that the nightclub owner tasked the backup dancer to get Jocelyn into the club, allowing them to meet. Upon discovering Nikki's interest in signing Diane to her label, the nightclub owner advises the dancer to establish a connection between them so they could negotiate. Later on, Ted Ross, accompanied by assistants Isaac and Chloe, arrives at Jocelyn's luxurious mansion for a casual hangout and some drinks. When they are alone, the nightclub owner and pop star share a private moment in the indoor pool. Ted Ross reassures the artist, who is grappling with mental instability, that her upcoming tour will not be cancelled. He further praises her lifestyle, implying that she's the American dream. After experimenting with illicit substances for the first time, Leia finds herself sharing an intimate moment with Isaac. During their interaction, Isaac discloses that the nightclub owner signed him to his label after hearing him sing in church. Meanwhile, after impressing everyone with her superb piano skills, a clothless Chloe explores the pop star's bedroom, overwhelmed by her wealth. She then wears one of the pop idol's designer dresses before witnessing the couple's passionate moment together. Following their intimate time together, Ted Ross proposes to collaborate with Jocelyn on three songs, intending to submit them to the label. He then suggests the idea of moving in together to facilitate their work process, a suggestion that the pop star eagerly agrees to. Upon leaving the pop star's room, Chloe's melodic voice fills the air as she sings a beautiful song song about family. Her heartfelt performance captivates everyone, drawing them into the room to witness her talent. Meanwhile, Isaac joins in and harmonizes with her, showcasing his impressive vocal abilities. As Ted Ross holds Jocelyn in his arms, the pop star becomes part of the impromptu performance, her voice intertwining with Chloe's and Isaac's. Singing the emotional track, tears fall down her eyes, reflecting her connection to the music. Meanwhile, Leia, who is across the couple, grows increasingly anxious as she witnesses the growing influence of the sketchy club owner over the unstable pop star. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.